The uh, verse that I want to focus my sermon on tonight was in verse 7 where the Bible read, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. And the title of my sermon tonight is, People Don't Hate Pastor Anderson. People Don't Hate Pastor Anderson. Now I'm very excited to preach this sermon because I think it's an important truth that we need to understand what the Bible teaches about those that would hate God's man. You say, why Pastor Anderson? Well, he gets a lot of the, the, the attacks and the brute force just because he's shining the, the light of the gospel a lot brighter than most people. But it's not because it's him specifically. It's not just a message just for him. It's for any man of God. It's any person that wants to preach the gospel. It's for anybody that's going to go out and preach this word faithfully. People are going to hate you. But it's misguided hate. They're not really hating you. They're hating God's word. And I'm going to prove that tonight. But if the Bible lined up with what Joel Osteen preaches, if what Joel Osteen preaches is exactly what the Bible said, people would love Pastor Anderson. They would think he was the greatest because Pastor Anderson has committed himself to just preaching what the Bible says. And we see that this is really popular. I mean, Joel Osteen has the biggest church in America, over 30,000 people in a given service. That's a lot of people. And we see if the Bible lined up exactly with what he taught, Pastor Anderson would be teaching the same things. And the world would love him. But why is the world not loving Pastor Anderson? It's because the Bible doesn't say that. It's because the Bible doesn't line up with his doctrine. You know, what does the word hate even mean, though? Go, if you would, to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings 22. I looked up in the dictionary. The word hate is described as feel intense or passionate dislike for someone or something. I think most people get what the word hate means. Some of the uh, uh, synonyms are loathe, detest, despise, abhor, execrate. These are just straight words that came out of the dictionary. Guess what? They're all in the Bible, too. All of those words are found in the Bible. And they all mean basically the same thing. If you, I'll read for you one verse in Matthew chapter 6. The Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either will hate the one and love the other, or else you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He uses this verse to teach us that the word hate means the same thing as to despise. They're, they're synonymous. They mean the same thing. You have intense dislike or uh, you don't like something at all and it's an object of maybe a person or it could be a, some type of thing. We see the Bible talks about you know, God hating sin, God hating the lying tongue, God hating wickedness, God hating adultery, God hating putting away. But it also could be just at a person too. I mean, he hates the bloody and deceitful man. We see a lot of examples in the Bible of different things that could be hated. But we're going to see the first reason I have tonight of why people don't really hate Pastor Anderson. Look at 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 3. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Josephat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Josephat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art. My people is thy people. My horses is thy horses. And Josephat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. And the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Joseph had said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Joseph, had, There is yet one man, Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Joseph had said, let not the king say so. So now we have a perfect example of a man of God, of a preacher who's being hated. And we say, well, why is he going to be hated? Well, he gives us the answer right there in verse 8. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me. Now, in this verse, why is it that the king of Israel, who's Ahab in this story, okay, why does he hate Micaiah? Is it because of his haircut? Is it because of the clothes he wears? Is it because of the personality is it because of the color of his skin? Is it because of his job? No, it's because he preaches the word of God and it's not positive. He doesn't like the word of God that's coming out of his mouth. Skip down to verse 13. And the message that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, 
what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So we see Micaiah's attitude. He says, look, I'm just going to preach what the Bible says. I don't care what, what's going on. I don't care who the king is. I'm not a respecter of persons. I'm not just going to jump on board with Joel Osteen's program and Joyce Meyer and say God's not mad at you. Hey, if God's mad at you, I'm just going to tell you what the Bible says. You know, this is hard preaching. You say, what's hard preaching? Hard preaching is telling what the Bible says when it's negative, when it's not popular, when you're not going to like the message, when you're going to tell something to somebody that's going to maybe hurt them, hurt their feelings, maybe tell them that they're doing something wrong, saying, hey, this guy's not prophesying good concerning me. Well, the question would have been, well, was it true? Yeah. Well, was what he said right? Was it actually God's word? We see the person hates the messenger. He hates the guy that's just going to preach God's word unfiltered. It's not the person that matters. It's the message. Skip down to verse uh, 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did not I tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? So in this story, what's happening? Ahab wants to go to battle. And he's saying, hey, are we going to be delivered? And Micaiah finally gives him the message from the Lord. And he says, look, I see a bunch of sheep scattered because they have no shepherd. What is he saying? What is he prophesying? He's saying, look, the shepherd, who's representative of the king, he's going to perish. He's going to die. And once he dies... All the soldiers, all the sheep, they're just going to come back to their land. They're going to be scattered. They're not going to have the king. And that's exactly what we see in the future. We see that Ahab goes out and he tries to disguise himself. He tries to pretend that Jehoshaphat's Ahab. He's trying to get him on the front lines to be his decoy. But he still gets slain. He still gets killed in battle. He still dies. Why? Because it's God's word. It's the truth. And if somebody knew that you're about to go into a dangerous situation, you're about to die. I mean, do you really want them to lie to you? Hey, I'm about to go on this trip, you know, to Africa. Should I go? Well, you're going to die in a plane crash. I mean, wouldn't you want to know that? I mean, wouldn't you want to know if you're going to go in some battle and you were going to die and you could get it right from God's own, you know, word? If God's word could tell you what's going to happen? But we see he hates God's word. That's why he hates Micaiah. Go to uh, Mark chapter 6. So the first reason, why do people hate Pastor Anderson? Because they hate hard preaching. They hate God's Word. If it's not positive, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear God's Word when it's negative for them. When it's telling them they're doing something wrong. When it's telling them they can't do what they want. We see that, what does is, what is, uh, Ahab desire? What is the king of Israel desire? He wants to go to the battle, right? He wants to take over these lands. He wants to be, you know, win this battle. That's what he desires. He doesn't want someone to tell him no. He doesn't want someone to say, don't, don't do this. And we see when he's told no, he hates it. He doesn't like it, so he just does it anyways. It says in Luke chapter 10, I'll read for you. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. We see that when you hate the messenger, you're not hating the messenger. You're hating the person the message came from. Jesus Christ said, hey, if they hate you, they don't really hate you. They hate me. But they don't really even hate me. They hate him that sent me. They hate you. They hate the Jesus Christ. And they hate the Father. We see that the, the line of hate actually goes all the way to the top. It's not the messenger that they hate. It's not the person delivering the message. It's misguided hate. Now, of course, they'll, you'll gnash on you with your teeth. They'll say evil against you. They'll want to kill you. They'll want to slay you. But really, it's not you personally that they're mad at. Because you could be replaced with any other person and they would change their affections towards you. If you weren't preaching this message, they wouldn't hate you. That's right. So it's not you that they hate, it's the message that you're preaching. You could plug and play any single person and it wouldn't matter. Why do people hate Pastor Anderson? It's not because his haircut. It's not because of how many kids he has. It's not because he lives in Tempe, Arizona. It's not even because he's preaching the message loud. It's the words that are coming out of his mouth. They hate God's Word. They hate it when someone gets up and screams the truth of God's Word. They hate hard preaching. That's not Pastor Anderson. It's not the man of God. And you know, you say, well, they just don't like it because he's yelling, because he's screaming. Man, these false prophets, they get up on television, they scream and yell. You go to, the, you go to these big stadiums, 
Where, you know, they're, they're worshiping the football, they're worshiping soccer, they're worshiping whatever sport it is. They love to scream and yell for their team. They go to rock concerts where there's all this reveling and they're screaming. Yeah. They go, you know, to the, to the bar and they get drunk and they scream and they sing their karaoke as loud as they can. They love loud stuff. Yeah. They love it. They love it at the top. They just don't like the message. That's why they don't like the hard preaching. That's why they don't like it when people lift up their voice. But Isaiah 58 says, cry loud. Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. You know, you say, well, Jesus, he wouldn't have been like that. Jesus didn't need to, you know, scream or yell or say anything loud. Well, in the chapter that we read, John chapter 7, it said in verse 28, Then cried Jesus in the temple. Now, some people get confused with the word cry means because today most people think cry is like a baby. You know, it's like, wah, wah. that's not, no, the Bible uses the word weep when it talks about someone, you know, tears coming down their face or being really sad. But when someone cries in the Bible, it means they're screaming. It means they're yelling. I mean, they're lifting up their voice very loud. It says, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught saying, ye both know me and you know whence I am and am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. It said in John chapter 7, verse 37, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. What a soul winner. I mean, he's just preaching to these people. Believe on me. If you come to me, you can have everlasting you know, life, everlasting water. He uses all kinds of illustrations. He says in John chapter 12, verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Jesus Christ was preaching a clear message. Hey, believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Believe on me. When you believe on me, you're believing, you know, the record that God sent of his son, right? The record is in John, 1 John chapter 5, verse uh, 10. It says in John chapter 3, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So it's not that the people hate the screaming. It's not that they hate the person. They hate the message. They hate the hard preaching. They hate the truth. Look at Mark 6, verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. It's an interesting thought. Jesus Christ said, look, even a prophet, though, he's not going to have any honor with his family. They're not going to like him. They're going to probably despise him or have some kind of ill thoughts about him. They're not going to give him any kind of honor. Skip down to verse 14. So we have Jesus speaking, okay? And we got that context. Look at verse 14. And King Herod heard of him. Who's the him? It's Jesus Christ. For his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said that this is Elias. And others said that it is a prophet or as one of the prophets, but when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and an holy and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. So in this passage, there's a lot of stuff here. But I just want to focus on this, this point. When they, when they think that Jesus Christ is, you know, when they hear about Jesus Christ, who does Herod think he is? He says, this guy's John the Baptist. I mean, he's come back. I mean, he's, why, why? Why does he think he's John the Baptist? I'll tell you why. Because he's preaching hard. And John the Baptist was preaching hard. John the Baptist is preaching against Herod that he was in adultery, that he had married his brother's wife, Herodias, and look what it says in 19. Herodias had a quarrel against him. Why? She hated the hard preaching. She hated the message. But look at verse 20. This is interesting. It says, For when Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. So did Herod just hate John the Baptist? Did he just hate the person? Did he hate? No, he said, Look, I know this guy's righteous. I, this guy's a holy man. He's just. I mean, he had respect for John the Baptist, the person. But guess what? He didn't like the message that he was preaching. He didn't like the fact that he was preaching against the fact that he was an adulterer. He was preaching against Herodias. Look, it's not you that they hate. It's the word of God. They hate God's message. They hate the truth. They don't like being reproved or being rebuked. The Bible says, rebuke a wise man and you will love thee. 
Rebuke, reprove a scorner, and he will hate thee, is what the Bible says. Rebuke is strong. Reproof is just like a mild correction. We see the, the unwise person, he can't even take a mild correction. The Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The people that love the Bible, they don't get offended when you preach the truth hard. They like it. They want to get their life right. They want to follow God's commandments. They want to do what's right. If, if, you're, if they're doing something wrong, they want to be told so they can correct it. People that love the truth come to the light. Those that hate the truth, they don't want to come near the light. They don't want the light to be shining on them either. They hate it when you're walking around with the light. I mean, imagine you're in a room with a whole bunch of cockroaches and you got this flashlight. And if you start shining the light on them, they run away. They get all scared. If you turned on the lights in the room, they just flee. That's what these people are like. They hate the light. They don't want it to be shown on their life. So, you, you know, what, what do most churches do? They just kind of shine the light on the ceiling so you can't see what's around. You got a cockroach just like running across your lap and running across your shirt and running on the chair right next to you. They don't care. They don't care to have cockroaches filled in their churches. They're just too afraid to actually shine the light and actually see what's around them. They're like, I can hear it and I can feel it and it's kind of yucky, but if I turn on the lights, I'm going to be terrified. So they just don't shine the light. They only preach the good stuff. They only preach the nice stuff. They're too afraid to shine the light of the Bible. Why? Because people hate it. Because they'll run, they'll flee. Go to John chapter 8 if you would. I'm going to read for you. It says, in, you know, when we look at Elijah and we look at John the Baptist, they both screamed. They both yelled. They both cried aloud. It says in 1 Kings 21, talking about Elijah, it says, And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. What did Elijah do? Man, he was a hard preacher. He was preaching God's truth, and it was just hard. Hey, you're just you're wicked, and the dogs are going to eat your blood, and they're going to eat your wife's blood, and your house is going to be like the house of Nebat, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, where it's just going to all just be destroyed. There's going to be nothing left of it. You're, none of your children are going to reign anymore. None of their children are going to reign anymore. You're just going to be wiped off the face of the planet like the scum that you are. That's what he's preaching to the guy. That's not an easy message to hear. That's not, you know... But he's, why does he hate Elijah? Because of God's word. Yeah. He doesn't hate Elijah. He hates God's word. Look at John chapter 8, verse 37. I know that you're Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. For, your fa for you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Man, there's so much in this. Look at verse 37. It says, because my word hath no place in you. Why is it that they hate Jesus Christ? Because of his word has no place in them. Look at verse 40. But now you seek to kill me. Why? A man that hath told you the truth. Why do they hate Jesus Christ? Because he was preaching the truth. 
Look at verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. They don't want to hear it. They can't hear it. They don't want to hear it. They want to get away from it. Look at verse 44. It says they were of their father, the devil. Why? Because they abode not in the truth. They hate the truth. Look at verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Look at verse 47. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. Why do the Jews hate Jesus Christ? They hate him because of his words, because of what he said. They were caught, they said he was a blasphemer because of what he said. They crucified him because he said he was the Son of God. What did they put on the inscription? They wanted him to say, well, he said that he was the Son of God. That was the accusation they're trying to put against him, right? Because they hated his word. They're like, we're not going to stone you because of the good works you do. We're going to stone you because of what you said. Because of the fact that you're saying you're the Son of God. Because you're speaking the truth. Because you're reproving us of all of our wicked deeds. Of the fact that we're hypocrites and liars and damning people's souls to hell. And because Jesus preached that, they hated him. And because he drew a crowd, they envied him. There was a lot of reasons why they hated him. They didn't hate Jesus Christ because of his hair. Because he had a short haircut and they didn't. They didn't hate Jesus Christ because he's wearing pants and they were wearing the long robes. They didn't hate him because of those things. They hated him because of his words. Because he preached the truth. Hard preaching is going to cause people to hate you. But they don't hate you. They hate the Word of God. They hate Jesus Christ. And they hate Him that sent Him. Right? The Father. They don't, they don't hate you. It's not about you. And if you want to be a preacher of God's Word, you have to get past the fact that people might claim they hate you and speak evil of you and realize, hey, it's not me they hate. They can't hate me. They hate God's Word. And you know what? People can hate you if you do evil to them. They could hate you if you, you walk in the flesh and you don't love your brother and you don't love your neighbor and you do sin it on them. You lie to them and you steal and you cheat and you commit adultery. People will hate you for those sins. But by preaching the Word of God, people will also hate you. But they don't hate you. They hate Jesus Christ. They hate the Word of God. And we ought to have a reputation of people hating us for the Word of God. Not because we, you know, fall into the sins or we, we walk in the flesh or we commit adultery or we steal from people or we blaspheme, you know, God's word by not working hard. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 18. Now, of course, you know, I've been talking a lot about hate. Why? Because the negative parts of the Bible are the ones that people shy away from. They don't want to talk about. Obviously, we're not supposed to just hate people, all the, like hate every single person and hate every unsaved person and hate every saved person that doesn't like our church. Jesus Christ said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We're supposed to love a majority of people, unsaved and saved. I mean, the majority of people, we're supposed to love them and care for them and want them to be saved and want them to follow God's commandments and to be baptized and go to church and be a soul winner and you know what sometimes when you love people you tell them the truth sometimes you have to tell them the hard truth and they don't like that either it says in exodus chapter 23 if thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden and wouldest for able to help him thou shalt surely help with him he's saying look even a guy that hates you you're supposed to help them you're supposed to you know cast their cares and their burdens upon you but does that mean you're supposed to hate or love everybody? Does that mean you're never allowed to hate anyone or hate anything? Well, that's not true. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 7. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he had never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Joseph had said, Let not the king say so. So this is what we already read before. It's in another place. It's saying the same thing again. Ahab hates Micaiah. Why? Because he doesn't prophesy good unto him. But look at chapter 19. Look at verse 1. So what happens is Jehoshaphat, the king of, Ju of Judah, he goes and helps the king of Israel in this battle. And we find out, was that a good decision here in uh, chapter 19? Look at verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. The Bible does not teach that you're supposed to love every single person no matter what. It makes it very clear. The ungodly that hate the Lord, they're the enemies of the Lord, not your enemy. They hate God. You are not supposed to love them and help them. You're not supposed to 
should cherish them and think they're precious and bring them into your church and bring them into your house and let them babysit your kids. No! We're supposed to have no fellowship with them. We're supposed to not even be anywhere near them. I'm not going to hang out with anybody that's a hater of God. That's a hater of the Lord. But you know, you go out soul winning, you knock on people's doors. Most unsaved people, they don't just hate Jesus Christ. They're the, they're, there's this, this reprobate type person that doesn't want to have anything to do with them. They don't want you know to hear his name. They spit and they blaspheme his name. No, I mean, most unsaved people, they even have some kind of honor or respect for the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you talk to a lot of people, the Catholics, the, you know, all these people that go to these churches, they're not saved. But they still have a lot of respect for the Lord Jesus Christ, at least they, by their mouth, right? But those that hate the Lord, those are not people that you're supposed to love. But you know what? That's a hard message. That's a hard teaching. That's, that's, that's not popular. Why? Because there's inevitably somebody in your family that's probably a reprobate. That's probably a sodomite or a pedophile or a predator or a hater of God is what Romans chapter 1 says. Why don't you go to Romans chapter 1? Let's get, let's get this doctrine nailed in. What's the first reason why people hate Pastor Anderson? They don't really hate him. It's misguided hate, right? But why do they hate him? Because of the hard preaching. Because he's preaching the truth and he's preaching it loud. And they don't like that. Or my second point though is, man, they hate him because he hates the homos. Because he hates the predators. Because he hates the pedophiles. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 31, I have hated them that regard lying vanities but I trust in the Lord. Psalms 97 says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of His saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalms 139 says, Surely thou wilt slay the wicked. O God, depart from me therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time to love and a time to hate. Now, this is what I ask a lot of people. They get really mad. They're like, you hate people. And I'm like, okay. Well, what does Ecclesiastes 3 mean when it says there's a time to hate? What does that mean? What am I supposed to hate? I'm supposed to hate evil according to the Bible. And guess what? I'm also supposed to hate those that are enemies of God. Now, to make sure we understand that, I like this passage, Psalms 139, because it gives us some descriptions of what this person's really like. It says the bloody man. It says they speak against thee wickedly. It says they take thy name in vain. It says they rise up against thee. I mean, these are not just your average unsaved people. Your average unsaved person is not just rising themselves up against the Lord, going around trying to blaspheme His name on purpose, trying, you know, being this bloody and deceitful and wicked person. That's not your average unsaved person, okay? So obviously, we need to love most people. I would say, you know, 95% of people, I'm just throwing a number out there, 95% of people you're just supposed to absolutely love, saved and unsaved. But there is a small percentage of people that are, you know, in our government, in our country, and most of the world today, they won't put them to death. So you have to tolerate their filth and their disgusting wickedness. But, you know, hatred is not a bad thing. And, you know, they always get you this hate speech. They say, oh, you know, Pastor Anderson, he has all this hate speech. Well, I looked up hate speech according, you know, online, what it says about it. It says it's like hating somebody for, you know, their age, just, you know, their gender, all kinds of things. One of them was their religion discriminating or despising someone for the religion. I mean, the Bible says in Psalms 119, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Guess what? I hate all false religion. I hate all religion that preaches against the Lord Jesus Christ, or has another plan of salvation, or preaches another gospel. I hate it all. So if that's hate speech, then I guess I'm going to preach hate speech. I mean, I think that's a positive thing. We just talked to a, gay, a guy out knocking doors today. He said, oh, I've been going to the Catholic church my whole life. I'm 54 years old. And you know what my church has never done? It's never preached against another religion. It's never preached against another church. It's never preached against another pastor. And I said, hey, our church preaches against other religions and pastors and churches all the time. Yeah. You know why? Because I hate every false way. Amen. You know, the Bible says there's many false prophets in the world. 
But so many people today, they say, oh, we're supposed to love each other and tolerate each other and get along. How can those two things be compatible? If there's many false prophets, then there's got to be a lot of people you got to hate. A lot of things that you hate, a lot of ideologies, a lot of false ways. Look at Romans 1 verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. So why are they given into vile affections? Because they change the truth of God into a lie. Why? They hate the truth. You say, why are the Sodomites not saved? Is it because they committed that sin? No. It's because they hate the truth. They hate God's free gift. They hate the gospel. They're never going to believe the gospel. And I think everybody can admit, hey, if you don't believe the gospel, you're not saved. Period. End of, di- end of discussion. But look at verse 26. For this cause... God gave them up to vile affections. Why are they sodomites? Why are they predators? Why are they pedophiles? Because they hate the truth and God gives them up unto their, their lies. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. You want to know who the haters of God are? You find them right here in Romans chapter 1. You know who the haters of God are? The false prophets teaching and damning people's souls to hell. You know who the reprobates are? Those that would take and add or remove from God's word. Why? Because this is the truth. But what does it say? Those that would change the truth and hate the truth, what does he do? He gives them up into vile affections and become reprobate. Those are the people that we're not supposed to have any fellowship with. We're not supposed to hang out with. They're full of murder. They hate the Lord. They rise up against the Lord. Why? They're perverting the truth. And you know what? Why do they hate Pastor Anderson? Because he preaches the truth. And they just hate the truth. It doesn't matter who preaches it. They just can't stand the truth. Go to Judges chapter 20 if you would. Judges chapter number 20. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 15, And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land. And he removed all the idols that his father had made. Now obviously Joel Osteen doesn't preach any of this parts of the Bible. I mean, he wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. Why do people love Joel Osteen? Because he doesn't preach the Bible. Why do people hate Pastor Anderson? Because he preaches the Bible. People attack him and attack our church and attack members of our church. Say, oh, you hate people. They're just ignorant of the Bible. And the Bible says that he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness because he knoweth not whither he goeth. So even a saved person could maybe hate you or hate or despise something about you, but really they're despising God's word. And if you have hate for your brother in Christ, you're in darkness. The perfect picture of this is Saul and David in the Bible. Why? Because Saul hates David. Saul despises David. And what does he do? He's walking in darkness. Why do you think he's wandering on the mountain? He's on one side and David's on the other and he can't find him and he walks in the cave and he can't even see him. He's just in darkness. And it's a picture of the the spiritual life of a saved person who decides to hate God's word or despise God's word. You say, I don't think that's possible. Well, the Bible talks about David when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he killed Uriah the Hittite. The Lord said, why have you despised my commandment? What does that mean? He didn't, he didn't at that moment have pure love or pure, you know, uh, righteousness with the word of God. He had some kind of hate or some kind of despite in his heart for the word of God. So even a saved person They could still hate part of God's word. They could hate the Lord. They could have some kind of despise for the Lord in the flesh, right? right? The Bible teaches in 1 John very clearly that the new man can't sin. He that is born of God does not commit sin. It's impossible for the new man to hate the Lord Jesus Christ or to hate God. Or, you know, I've heard some people that believe you can lose your salvation. They said, well, God's not going to just carry someone kicking and screaming into heaven. (laughs) I'm like, that's stupid. Now, the flesh might feel that way, but guess what? The new man will never feel that way. So, of course, I agree. Yes, no one is going to not want to go to heaven that's going to go to heaven. They all desire that. We all desire the adoption of our Father. We, call, we cry, Abba, Father. 
We, we desire to be present with the Lord. We desire to depart and to be with Christ. Of course. But the flesh can still despise the Word of God. It's at war. It's at enmity with the Spirit. It doesn't want to do the things of, of, the, of God's law. It's in a complete battle. And so we have to crucify the flesh. We have to deny the flesh daily. We have to starve the flesh to walk in the Spirit, to walk in the newness of life. And why do so many Christians today hate Pastor Anderson and hate the Word of God? Because they're ignorant. Because they're in darkness. Because they don't know what the Word of God says. So they're not walking in the Spirit. Why? I mean, how can the Holy Ghost bring into remembrance all things that Christ commanded if they don't even know what He said? <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Look at Judges 20, verse 12. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities under Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. I think this is another perfect example of how someone could be saved but fighting for the wrong thing. Hating the truth. Not wanting to execute righteous judgment. I don't believe every single person of the, the children of Benjamin was unsaved. Was just an unsaved reprobate. But you know what? As a whole... They went to battle against all the other king, the children of Israel, all the other tribes, to fighting for the sons of Belial. And you know, the Old Testament law said that you know any of the children of Belial were found, that the entire city was supposed to be destroyed. They were supposed to take it and destroy all of them. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, for the sake of time, we won't turn there. But Jude and 2 Peter, it makes this doctrine super clear. The Sodomites are not to be loved in the New Testament. They're supposed to be put to death, according to Romans chapter 1 and Leviticus 20.13. The Bible makes it clear from the beginning to the end, God wants these people put to death. Why? Because they hate the Lord, they hate God, they're murderers, they rise up against them, they're predators, they're pedophiles, they hate the truth, they abide not in the truth. They're like their father, the, the devil, who's a murderer from the beginning. Amen. They just want to kill and destroy and hurt and just take as many souls as damn them to hell with them, right. is what these people want. We're not supposed to love these people. Have nothing to do with them. But that's why people hate Pastor Anderson. They'll hate the Word of God. It's not Pastor Anderson they hate. They hate Romans 1. They hate Jude. They hate 2 Peter. They hate the story of Genesis chapter 19 where he rained fire and brimstone and killed them all. They hate that story. They don't want to hear it. But it's God's truth. It's God's Word. And if you're going to be a man of God, you've got to preach the whole Bible. Not just the parts you like. Go to Genesis chapter 37. Say, oh, why are you preaching all this, this hard preaching and this hate? Where's the love? Where's the love? Don't they hate Pastor Anderson for the loving stuff? They do. They hate him for the loving stuff too. Look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren... And they hated him yet the more. And they said unto him, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams. Catch this. And for his words. For his words. Let's keep reading. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brother envied him, but his father observed the saying. Isn't it interesting, even the prophets in the Old Testament, they weren't without honor, <laughs> save, you know, in their own country, their own brethren. Their own brother despised them. Why? Because of the word of God. Because what he, Now, is Joseph getting up here and just preaching his opinion? Is he just preaching, hey, this is what I think? He's saying, look, I got, a, I got a dream from the Lord. I want to tell it to you. But guess what? They don't like the message. They don't like the fact that someone would be ruling over them. That someone would be having dominion over them. You know what? It's no different than Pastor Anderson today. Why do the old IFBs hate Pastor Anderson so much? Because they hate the idea that he could be a better soul winner than them. 
that he could be winning more people to Christ than him. That our church could be doing greater works than him. And they know, hey, in the afterlife, we're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. I'm betting the person that does more works is going to be the person ruling and reigning more and having more dominion in heaven, right? And they hate that. They despise him. They envy him. You know, it, you can't, not everybody's going to be at the top. That doesn't mean you should just hate him and do no works. Hey, they're still second and third and fourth. I mean, look, there's multiple thrones that the, the disciples are going to sit on. There's the right hand and the left hand. I mean, not everybody can be the king. Not everybody, and the Bible even says that many that are first will be last, and many that are last will be first. You don't know exactly how God's going to reward everybody and exactly what it's going to be like. The person that we probably esteem the most is probably not who's going to be the highest position. I mean, the Bible says that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. A lot of times if people are getting all this recognition in the sight of men, they're probably not getting any rewards in heaven. It's the guy that's doing all those things in the behind the scenes. He's getting all, racking up all these rewards in heaven. His father would see them, do it in secret. That's the guy that's probably going to be reigning the most. Obviously, there are certain people that their works are manifest beforehand, is what the Bible teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Some people are in a position where their works are just going to be noticed by people. And that's not, that doesn't take away from the fact that they're going to be rewarded in heaven. People like Moses, people like the prophets, people like the disciples, people like the apostles. Obviously, the apostle Paul, I mean, probably did the most works of anybody that we know of, right? He's still going to be greatly rewarded. That doesn't take away from him. But I'm just saying, look, they didn't have this attitude of, well, Joseph may be the ruler, but I still want to be there with him. I want to rule with him. I want to do great accolades with him. No, they hated him. They despised him. They envied him. The Bible says in Psalms 120, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Now to Joseph, he come. hey, I want to rule over you guys. Hey, I'm going to be over you guys. I'm going to have to He's just preaching God's word. He's just getting up and preaching God's word. And when Pastor Anderson gets up and preaches the importance of soul winning and how people are going to be rewarded for soul winning, they take that and they say, oh, you just think you're going to be better than us and you're greater than us. No, he's just preaching the Bible. He's trying to teach you something to motivate you so that you'll go out soul winning so that your church isn't a dud, your church isn't lame, but they hate him. They hate him because of the Word of God. They don't hate him because of who he is. In the inward man, they're not mad that he's getting people saved for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in their flesh. They envy him and they gnash on him with their teeth. They're je- they have not jealousy, they have envy for him. Okay? It says in, uh, go to Acts chapter 13 if you would. Numbers 11 it says, And Moses said unto them, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? Look, it's, it's not about one person. The man of God wants everybody to be a prophet. He wants ever to be a soul winner. He wants everybody to go out. He wants the word of God to go out sounding forth. He wants him to increase and him to decrease. It's not about, Pastor Anderson is not about his program. It's not about how many people can find out about him. Look, he's lifting other pastors and preachers up constantly. He's trying to send other guys out. He's not trying to just bring everybody into his church and just see how big his church can get. You can see it by his works. You can see it by what he's doing. He's, he's taking all of the money of Faith Word Baptist Church and pouring it into other churches at times. Doing free soul winning events for other churches. Going out and trying to teach other people how to be soul winners. Trying to help them with their YouTube accounts. I mean, all these things are pointing to the fact of what? He's trying to get Christ to increase. But they hate that. They hate it because they know what he's doing is right. They hate it because they know what the Word of God says. And they hate the Word of God. It says in Matthew chapter 27, 18, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. You know why the Pharisees delivered Jesus Christ? Another reason? Because they envied him. Mark 15 says, For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. Look at Acts chapter 13, verse 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Now think about this, okay? Imagine you're in a city, you have a church, you're trying to reach the city with the church. Maybe in some cases they only had one church, okay, the, the, where they would preach the laws of Moses back in that day, right? Wouldn't you want everybody to come to your church? Wouldn't you want the whole town to come? 
But then Paul comes, the evangelist comes, he's preaching the Word of God, and everybody shows up, and guess what? They hate it. They envy the guy. They're like, well, when I was preaching, nobody showed up. They're not excited that everybody's hearing the Word of God. That everybody's trying to get on Christ's program. People today, they're not excited that people are getting saved and starting to come to their church. Oh, you got saved by Pastor Anderson? Don't come here. Don't come here. Why? Because they envy Pastor Anderson. They envy the fact that he's the one that got them saved. Well, if I didn't get the person saved, I don't want him to come to my church. How wicked. Yeah. How evil. Why do you despise the commandment of the Lord? We're supposed to preach the gospel to every creature. And you're, you're going to turn people away? You don't want saved people to come to your church? Why? Because you envy them. You're like the, the Jews that you know, didn't want to get saved. These guys weren't even saved. I mean, even saved people, though, today, they turn away you know, new converts just because they're affiliated with Pastor Anderson. But guess what? It's not that they hate Pastor Anderson. They hate the Word of God. They're envious. They have some kind of iniquity or some kind of uh, sin in their own heart. So they need to get right like David tried to get right after he had killed Uriah. Philippians chapter 1, I'll read for you. This is the attitude of Paul. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. What is the attitude of the righteous preacher? Hey, you're preaching Christ. I'm going to rejoice. Hey, people are getting saved. I'm going to rejoice. But you know what the people they do with Pastor Anderson? They hate on him. They gnash on him with the teeth. They pick apart the soul winning. They pick apart our church. They try to pick apart his sermons. They say, oh, I don't like the hard preaching. I don't like that you don't like homos. Hey, he's preaching Christ. Why don't you just rejoice? But you know what? They have to hate him in their heart. And they don't hate him. They hate the word of God. They hate the man of God. They hate the messenger. They don't. They, you can't hate the messenger. They hate the message. They, him that hateth me, he that heareth me not, heareth not me, and heareth not him that sent me. It's you got to you got to shift it right. It's misguided hate. It's misguided despite. They they despise the word of God. They they loathe some part of the Bible. They have some kind of sin or iniquity in the flesh that they need to crucify. Go to Deuteronomy twenty two if you would. So my first three points: Why do people hate Pastor Anderson? Well, they hate the hard preaching. They hate the fact that he preaches against the haters of God, the sodomites, the pedophiles. Why do they hate him? They hate the soul winning and the good works that are going forth from our church. They hate it because they're, because they're full of envy. What's another reason? They hate him because he preaches the least commandments in the Bible. The Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the, these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Pastor Anderson knows this verse. So guess what? He's going to preach the least parts of the Bible. The least commandments. The ones that aren't the most popular or the most well known or even the ones that people like. But he's going to preach the truth. Why? Because he doesn't want to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to preach the whole Bible. Look at Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination of the Lord thy God. Now, I want to make myself very clear. Every commandment of God is extremely important. It's something we should all do. I believe that we should all follow all of the commandments. They're extremely important. There is not one that should be diminished even a little bit. But there are some commandments that are more important than others. Okay, And from my perspective, how you would make that determination is how often it's preached in the Bible. Now you have a couple examples in the New Testament where it explicitly tells you Jesus Christ was you know, rebuking the Pharisees because they tithed of anise and cumin, but they didn't preach what? Uh, faith, or they didn't preach uh, judgment, faith, and, and mercy, right? He's giving you uh, some examples of, of uh, certain commandments that are more important than others. He's saying, look, faith and judgment and mercy, these are more important than tithing. So that would be one way to know. Another way I believe is just how many times is it mentioned in the Bible? I mean, do we have whole chapters dedicated to this? Is this in every single book? Is this something that's just mentioned over and over? And we have commandments in the Bible like praise the Lord. That's mentioned so many times in the Bible. I mean, it's probably one of the most common 
uh, commandments in the Bible, I believe it's super important. Now, something that's mentioned less, I would say it's what you would consider a least commandment. Now, that doesn't mean I don't believe you should do it. I believe everybody should follow that commandment. I believe it's super important. I believe we should teach men and women to follow every commandment. But if it's a least commandment, we shouldn't shy away from it. We should still preach it. Okay? So making this clear, I believe Deuteronomy 22.5, personal opinion, is probably an example of a least commandment. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you want God to think that you're great in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to preach it. You're going to preach all the Bible. And why do people hate Pastor Anderson? Because he preaches these least commandments that aren't popular. <clears throat> hey, women aren't supposed to wear pants. They're supposed to wear a dress and a skirt and dress like a lady. They're not supposed to dress like a dyke and a lesbian and some kind of perverted freak, reprobate, hater of God. And you know what? Men ought to not wear dresses and skirts either. You know, today's world is getting so sick and disgusting and perverted that men actually dress like this. It's, it's gross. Parents will put their children in these kind of outfits and send them to school. It's disgusting. It's perverted. We should never do that. God says it's an abomination. He feels pretty strongly about it, doesn't he? But, you know, it's only mentioned, you know, in this one verse real explicitly like this. There's other places where you can take mention and you can derive, you know, how this is true in the Bible, the fact that men wear pants a lot of times, they're commanded to wear linen breeches or hosen. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 an example of how there's a difference between men's haircuts and women's haircuts, just proving the fact that God does care about physical appearance, but he has a lot of commandments in the Bible where he says, look, physical appearance isn't the most important. Being godly is more important. You know, it's not the outward appearance that matters. It's the inward man. Fix the inward man and then, you know, fix the outside of the platter, Okay. Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 30. That's where we're finished. You know, in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus Christ said, but, thou this, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You know, when Jesus Christ was commending the churches, he was commending them for their hatred. Right. Shock. Hey, guess what? Jesus Christ was commending a church for their hatred of what? The deeds of the Nicolaitans. He didn't like what they were doing. You know what? I like the fact that he left it broad because I believe what he's saying here is it's okay to hate certain things. He didn't want to give it to just one really specific doctrine because then people would say, well, it's only that that you're supposed to hate. It's only just fornication or it's only just you know, women preachers or it's only this one doctrine. No! Everything in the Bible that God said to hate, we're supposed to hate. Hate the evil. Love the good. Hate the false prophet. Love the good prophet. Hate the false way. Love the gospel. We're supposed to hate the things that are in this Bible tells us to hate. And you know what? God commends those that would follow even the least commandments, even the hatred. Because you know, hatred is much less in the Bible than love. Love is many more times in the Bible, many more verses, many more commandments about love. But hey, if I'm going to follow all of God's commandments, even the least ones, I'm going to even follow the hate ones. I'm going to hate the haters of God. I'm going to hate those that hate the Lord. My last point kind of sums it up. Why do people hate Pastor Anderson? Because he exposes false doctrine. Because he exposes all the liars and the frauds and he preaches against them by name. The Bible says, I've read this before, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. The Bible says in Psalms 119, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. It says in Psalms 119, 128 again, therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 163, I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. You know what? We're supposed to hate lies. We're supposed to hate, you know, every false way. I mean, if you truly love people, right. how could you want them to go to hell? Right. How could you want them to burn in the lake of fire for all of eternity? So when someone's lying to them, teaching them a false way to go to heaven, that's just damning their soul. How could you not hate that? I mean, how could you not hate the pedophile that's molesting the child and so much more the false prophet that's damning a soul to hell? We should hate that with perfect hatred. Hatred that comes from the Bible. Amen. Hatred because you have love for God. Hatred because you love the gospel. Hatred because you love people and you don't want them to be suffering in hell for all of eternity. Isaiah chapter 30, look at verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children. 
Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an incident. Look at that, verse 12. Because ye despise this word. They don't even want the truth. They're telling the prophets, hey, don't preach us the Bible. Don't tell us the truth. Isn't that what we saw with Ahab and Micaiah? I don't like this guy. He doesn't prophesy good concerning me. Hey, tell me the good thing. Tell me I'm going to win the battle. I don't really care what the Bible says. Just tell me I'm going to win. That's what you see these people are like too, right? Yep. Don't prophesy them as right things. Prophesy deceits. Don't tell me that my sins are sins. Don't tell me that I'm going to hell. Don't tell me my false perverted religion is damning my soul. Don't tell me the pedophile next to me wants to kill me and molest me. I want to, I want to hear all the deceits. I want, to say, I want to hear how everybody loves me and everything's great and everything's roses and God's not mad at me and I can go live however I want and do whatever I want and no consequences. That's what people want. But you know what? It's because they despise this word. They despise the word of God. Why do they hate Pastor Anderson? They hate him because of the hard preaching of the Bible. Not his opinion, the Bible. They hate him because of God's wrath on his enemies. They hate it when Pastor Anderson gets up and preaches that all the Sodomites are going to burn in hell for all of eternity. They hate that because of the Word of God. They hate God's love for people. So they don't like it when he's a, he's a great soul winner. When he shows how much he loves people by the great works that are done by our church. They hate God's commandments, even the least ones. So they don't want to follow them. You know what? They hate the truth. They love lies. That's why they're saying, prophesy us the lies. Give us the lies. Feed us the lies. Give me that McDonald's Big Mac. Come on, just keep feeding me that Big Mac. I don't want any healthy, nutritious food. I don't want to eat the vegetables. I don't want to eat, you know, all the, the fruits and all the things that are, that are healthy for me. Give me some lies. Give me some, you know, uh, deceits. This is a very important message. Because if you become a preacher of God's Word, if you go out and you're a soul winner, people, it'll seem like they hate you. It'll seem like they despise you. It'll seem like they're going to speak evil of you. You probably have maybe have family members or friends that may even say evil things about you. Say evil things about your church. Say evil things about your pastor. Even if it's not Pastor Anderson. Why did they hate Roger Jimenez? Not because of him. Because of what he preached. Because of God's word. They hate God's word. It's not the man. It's the God's word. So if you're going to preach God's word, you just realize, hey, it's not you they hate. They can't hate you. They hate me. What is Jesus Christ saying, look, they don't hate you, they hate me. They hate God's word. Let's have people hate us because of God's word, not because of our sins. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, so much for your word. Thank you so much for men that would stand up and preach your word unfiltered. They would just preach the truth. They would just speak what you've given them. They would just speak your Bible, cover to cover. The good, the bad, the ugly, all of the truth. I pray that we would just have a clear understanding that when people hate us for your word, it's not us they hate, it's the word of God. But I pray in meekness we would instruct those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.